Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway. I am ultra excited today because I've just taken delivery of a brand new Hornby tank engine. Alright, so this is one for the Great Western fans. Brand new tank engine, all new tooling, literally just released this week. The loco is this, the brand new Hornby Large Prairie, and mine is the 5101 class in Great Western Green as well. That's one of my favourite liveries. So, the RRP for this is £139.99, so that's right up there. It's a high price, so high expectations too. I bought mine from Hattons for £126, which is obviously quite a good discount. So, if you want to check out the range or possibly even pick one up for yourself i will include an affiliate link down in the description but today we're going to be looking at this figuring out what this is like it's the first time a large prairie has been introduced into hornby's range since the mid 1990s and i think even then it was an x dapple model wasn't it so this is very exciting stuff come with me we'll get it out find out what this one's like so the pressure's on today. I mean, I've literally just had the postman here 10 minutes ago. It's 11 o'clock on Wednesday. I'm hoping to have this video out at half five. I guess you guys will know whether or not I've succeeded. Looking at the front of the box, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? I mean, it's hard to tell what sort of detail we're dealing with at the moment, but as soon as I get this out, hopefully it will be obvious. Let me show you the end of the box then. So the version I have here is R3719. It's a GWR class 51XX, large prairie 262T, and it is number 41. Five, four. And they've also got the 6100 Large Prairie available, and between the two classes they've got quite a few liveries to choose from as well, which is pretty nice. Right, let me show you the back of the box then. So in real life these were classified 4MT, so you know, reasonably powerful things I would say for their size. In the centre there, brief history of the class, so feel free to pause and read that if you'd like to. And then on the end you've got the line drawings here, dated from 2018, which means it's taken around two years to go from drawings to the actual model being released. So it's quite quick in the grand scheme of things, isn't it? I mean, most manufacturers say it takes around two years, so obviously Hornby got a bit of a wiggle on. Right, I've not had the sleeve off. This has literally just come out of the box from Hattons, not even looked at the thing yet. So this really will be my first time clapping eyes on this model. Let's do it then. Let's slide off the sleeve. Here we go. Uh, okay. Uh, I've noticed we've just got a, a coupling loose. I could hear something rattling around. I'm actually quite glad it's a coupling and not something more serious. When I saw that, I thought it was something more serious. But no, yeah, slight distraction from the model. But there it is. Wow. Wow. And I tell you what, there's something about the way this is shining which sets this apart from the old Hornby Large Prairie that I've got, and I'll show you that later on. Yeah, there's a real sheen to particularly the Great Western uh, logo and the running number on the side of the cab. Yeah, I, I reckon this is going to be enjoyable. I think it really will be. Right, let's take this out then. There we go. So we've got the blister pack. How's the weight feeling? Uh, yeah, it's feeling all right. The old Hornby Large Prairie was incredibly heavy. It literally weighed 300 plus grams. So we'll see how this one compares. First of all, though, this is for the 31 slash 51 slash 61 XX. I didn't realize there was a 3-1 as well. Anyway, let's take a look, see if this reveals anything about the mechanics of the thing. Uh, so lubrication, yeah, it's fairly standard, isn't it? Uh, fitting accessories, which you can do if you like. Body removal, yeah, that's fairly basic. Ah, there we go. Wow, mechanism there looks quite a bit different to the other large prairie I've got. It's not got the can motor, it's got sort of a, an open frame motor. So it's going to be very interesting to learn how this runs, hopefully well. Then on the back, ah yes, fitting the brake rods. Yeah, that's pretty standard really, isn't it? Okay, let's have a look at this then. What is this going to be like? Yeah, the weight doesn't feel too bad actually. Some people have told me they're super light. Uh, but I've tried to avoid learning too much about these before I actually did my review. So... There we go, first little bonus, we've got the coupling there. That should be all right though, I mean they're designed to come off aren't they, so that's not a problem, I don't think. We have a detail bag which has, let's see here, so yep, the cylinder drain cocks, the instructions covered that. We've got the brake rigging and then just another coupling, presumably for the front. It looks like we've also got some vacuum pipes. So not an awful lot of detail to fit yourself, it seems as though the bulk of it is fitted to the model, which is great. And this is looking better and better. The more layers I shear off this thing, the better it's looking. Right, let's do it then. Let's pull this thing out and see what it looks like. Wow. Yeah, this is now looking very different to the old Large Prairie. Uh, the details on the tanks are looking way, way different. Right, come on, let's lift it out. All right, okay, well, first things first, 
it's not as heavy as the old large prairie was which is unfortunate you know when they release a new tool model you really want it to be an upgrade in every sense where the weight's concerned it seems it is a bit of a downgrade and actually feeling the running plate and different parts of the model i can tell that it is mainly made of plastic i mean the running plate definitely plastic even the top of the chimney the funnel there is uh, plastic and it looks it too so it's a bit of a shame about that given how much this cost me i mean 126 pounds let alone the rrp of 140 odd yeah prices like that led me to believe i would be getting some die cast with this it's a shame that there isn't anything like that but the level of detail does look really really excellent and it looks very very different to the old uh, large prairie that i've got so we'll take a close look at this in just a second first of all though here's a little bit of history on the large prairies more specifically the 5101 class so the 5101 class was a medium-sized 262 prairie tank engine introduced to the design of Charles Collett in 1929. The class would perform suburban passenger services and it was a development of several earlier designs such as Church Ward's 3100 or 5100 class. These weighed in at close to 80 tonnes and had a reasonably impressive tractive effort for their size making them ideal for a variety of duties. 140 were built in total between 1929 and 1949, meaning that some were actually built after nationalisation by British Railways. In their date, they were used all over the railway system in all sorts of different regions. After the Second World War, though, the class found themselves slowly being replaced by diesel-powered railcars on the local passenger services on which they worked. In response, the 5101s were relegated to mainline support duties as bankers or pilots, maybe, and sadly, withdrawal began in 1956 and ended in 1965, with just eight surviving in preservation, and the rest very sadly scrapped. All right, so there it is then, number 4154, up close and personal for you. And as you can tell, this is beautiful. The level of finesse on this model is astonishing. I do think it's a real shame that there isn't a bit more metalwork on board. It wouldn't have killed them to have the diecast running plate on this because then it might have been straight as opposed to quite obviously wonky as this one blatantly is. Or at the very least, the proper copper chimney because obviously that doesn't look particularly convincing. I've weighed this in and it weighs in at 230 grams, which is about 100 grams less than the previous large prairie in Hornby's range, which is a considerable downgrade. And when you consider that 139 pounds 99 as the ROP is the same as Hornby's J36, which not only has a tender, but the loco itself is mostly die cast you've got the die cast boiler die cast cab die cast smoke box and the die cast running plate yeah the value for money here doesn't seem to be that astonishing the other slight issue i've had with quality uh, sort of we got a hint of when i opened the box you'll notice i've put the coupling back in but watch what happens if i pick up the model gently and pop it back down on the track oh <laughs> yes the coupling will not stay in place i put it back in but as soon as I pop the model back down on the track, the thing drops back off again. And that is going to be a real frustration. So, yeah, I mean, it's just little things like that that do let models down. In fact, I bet if I thump the table hard enough, it'll come off. Are you ready? Yep. <laughs> It's far too loose, no good, unfortunately. Besides that, though, the actual manufacturing quality of this model is second to none. It really is superb. I've been over this model with a fine tooth comb and I cannot find any glue marks. I can't find any hiccups with the decoration. So the actual build quality really is fundamentally fantastic. <laughs> Let me show you some of the decoration then. So you've got the Great Western lettering. Uh, whether realistic or not, I don't know, but the glossy element to that looks fantastic in my opinion, as does the running number on the side of the coal bunker. Although I should say that Hornby haven't provided any etched number plates with this logo, which again is a, a bit of a shame given the price. This particular version is a little bit light on decoration. It's not one of the lined versions which Hornby have done, but you do have the gold pipe work underneath the steps, which I believe was just completely missing on Hornby's previous model. And on the buffer beams, you do have the running numbers printed onto there. And while we're looking at the buffer beams, you can see we do have some vacuum fittings pre-fitted, although you have to fit the rest if you want to. We have metal buffers, which are sprung. So there we go. Thank goodness this is not one of Hornby's design clever locos like the 72XX was. Yeah, this one is much, much better. Let's take a look at some of the separately fitted details then. I've already drawn attention to this, but the detailing on top of the tanks looks fantastic. 
I thought to start with that that pipework might have been separately fitted. Sadly, it's not. It is just part of the moulding, but it looks very convincing because it's been incredibly carefully painted so that none of the paint splashes over onto the actual tank, which looks fantastic. You've got the little filler caps here, which are all separately fitted, I think. They haven't gone quite as far as to separately fit the little eyelets there uh, as some manufacturers said. I think even Helgen separately fitted those on their 1361, but uh, yeah, I won't mention that thing again here. The whistles on top of the firebox, unfortunately, those appear to be just made of plastic and they look it really, don't they? Yep, yeah, as always, I think the metal whistles do look better. And while we're there, you can see the glazing in the cabs. While it is quite well done and it is flush with the outside, there are a few sort of issues with mine. There's a big spot on that one and they don't look quite as neat and tidy as they ought to, but it's not a big deal at all. On the subject of the cab, the sort of air intake on the top is adjustable and unlike the princess which was incredibly uh, loose this one's a little bit stiffer but i would say it's exactly as you'd like it to be because it's not going to move unless you're trying to move it which is good so i'll leave that open so that we can see the cab detail i mean it's quite an enclosed cab so there's not a great deal to see and they have done quite a good job the reverser appears to be separately fitted because it protrudes a long way from the rest of the controls and you've got the reverser and brake levers which are separately fitted as well I would say the actual painted detail inside isn't the best I've seen. It doesn't have any of the proper um, paintwork on the gauges and the water gauges aren't made of that transparent plastic as they sometimes are. But generally speaking, I think for how enclosed the cab is, it's very, very well done. I thought for a moment that the cab doors would open and close because they're sort of posed halfway open, aren't they? But no, sadly, they are fixed in that position, but they look great. They look very realistic. Around the back of the cab, you've got the sort of grill effect on the windows, which isn't just part of the glazing. It is a proper grill on there, which looks great. The coal load looks pretty good as well, looking at that. Yeah, it's nice and glossy, actually. It's got quite a realistic sheen to it. Not quite as glossy as some of the Backman coal loads. I think sometimes they go a bit over the top. But yeah, overall, it's pretty good. Around the side of the cab, we've got lots of metal separately fitted handrails. Those are some of the few metal details we've actually got. Around the back, we have the separately fitted lamp irons as well, as well as the vacuum pipe, which has been pre-fitted. Around the front, it's pretty similar in that regard as well. You do have the lamp irons on the running plate there, which is very nicely detailed. There's a lot of rivets going on there. Smoke box door looks very nice as well. You've got the fully separately fitted dart and the handrails carefully fitted to the front of there. All done extremely neatly and tidily. A big upgrade on this version compared with the older Hornby version are the wheels. Look at those. You've got the proper moulded wheels without the shiny axles poking through. They look really, really nice and realistic, as do the coupling and connecting rods, which look really nice and fine. And to be honest with you, I can't wait to see this thing run. Overall then, where the detail is concerned, this ticks all of the boxes. I do wish it was a bit heavier and I do wish that some of those details could have been made of metal. That would have justified the RRP a little bit better and made the model look a little bit better as well. But overall, as far as the detail goes, that is quite impressive and a bit better, I think, than I was expecting. So with that, I'm going to take this thing apart. I'm going to have a good look at the mechanism and then we'll get it down onto the track and test this for the very first time. So there it is then, the large prairie down onto the track, looking fantastic. I mean, seriously, on looks alone, this loco is superb. Before I get this tested though, let's have a word about the mechanism. So one of the first things I noticed was that there's a bit of a design cock up with the front pilot truck. So the first thing I noticed was that the screw that holds it on was incredibly loose. And so naturally, the first thing I did was go to tighten it. But the problem is, if it is fully tightened, the front pilot remains locked in place now usually the screws used for this purpose will have like a collar on them which allows the screw to be tightened all the way and the truck would be free in this case they got that wrong the collar is on the actual thread of the screw it's on like a column and the column isn't tall enough and so the tolerances are not right so whoever designed that unfortunately messed it up and you would have thought on the delivery of an engineering sample that an issue like that would have been picked up on Clearly, though, it wasn't. And in doing so, this screw could work itself out, drop out on the track and be lost. On bigger layouts, that could be a little bit of an issue. Besides that, though, the rest of the mechanism looks really, really good. Removing the loco base reveals a proper set of turned metal bearings, which means that the wheel set should run really nice and freely. Removing the body is a pleasure and it's also quite repeatable thanks to the properly manufactured threads on the screws. You haven't got any of your self-tapping rubbish with this loco, which is really, really good. 
Inside you can see a quite considerably sized five pole motor, which is great, and it also has a flywheel fitted onto it as well. And the chassis appears to be quite heavy and largely made of metal, which is where most of the weight comes from. That's really, really good. Besides that, you've got just the driving wheels doing the picking up. The front pilot and the rear pony don't do any picking up, but hopefully the six driving wheels should be enough. Right, well, I think I've covered all bases more or less, so let's give this the first test. I should say, as always, this literally is the first test straight out of the box. It hasn't been running yet. I would expect the performance to be better, as it's had 30 minutes in each direction, let's say. But out of the box, here we go. Is it going to be worth the money as far as performance goes? Let's see. I'm turning up. Ooh. Is it moving? I think it is actually. <laughs> I may be wrong because it's insanely slow. No, is it? No, I think it has stalled actually. It was to start with, but I just turned it right up and it, it's dead again. There we are. Well, like I say, it's unreasonable to try and test it properly before it's been run in. But no, look at this. This is actually a really smooth runner. There we go. All right, so at the slow speed, it's not smooth right now. I can only hope that that will get better as it goes. I think it has stalled. Oh, no. All right, try again. How's that speed? Yeah, right, so at the moment, it looks as though there is going to be a promise for the crawl. It's not crawling well right now, and it does seem to stall quite a bit. Hopefully, once the pickups start to get a little bit worn in, <laughs> they'll pick up a bit better. And hopefully, once the mechanism's all bedded in nicely and the brushes are worn in, hopefully the smoothness will improve. But right now, I mean, it's fairly smooth. It's not the best, but it's fairly. It's pretty quiet as well. The gearing is really, really nice. This is 50% speed right here. Oh, oh my God, what was that? Oh, it was the sodding coupling again. There it is. Goodness sake. So that's a nightmare. Hopefully that's not done it in. I don't think so. Man, that frightened me to death. Those couplings are really, really bad. In fact, there are a couple of minor issues on this loco that you would have thought would have been picked up during the sort of engineering sample phase. Couplings that don't fit properly onto the loco is definitely one of them. That's no good at all. So I'll have to leave the couplings off. I mean, you're going to have to glue it on, aren't you? There's no other way to get around that, which completely invalidates the point of having removable couplings. That's not very good, but not to worry. I'll find a way of sticking that on. All right, so it seems as though the shock to the system has helped a little bit because it is going a bit more smoothly now. Not so much in reverse, but like I say, I am 70% mm, sure this will be much better after having been running, but you never know, do you? So anyway, I think the point I was trying to make is that the gearing is pretty competent. That's 50% speed and that is by no means too fast. It's really quite good. All right, well, 50% speed running in. Here we go, see how it looks. All right, so it's beautifully smooth. I mean, from the running characteristics alone, I can tell that this is very different to the old large prairie. How I'm actually gonna couple coaches to this, I have no idea, but I guess I'll worry about that later on. For now though, at that sort of speed, it's perfectly smooth, really nice and quiet, and it looks fantastic. So yeah, I've got a good feeling about this. I'll be back with you shortly after it's running, and we'll see how it goes. All right, folks, running in has concluded. There we go. I mean, no problems, no derailments, but there's something about this that's not quite right. The way this runs seems a little bit labored to me. I mean, it can be going along perfectly happily on a perfectly straight piece of track, and suddenly it'll slow down and then it'll speed up again. There's just something about it not quite right. I mean, I hate to say this, but usually that kind of indicates a bit of an issue with the motor. It's also got no torque to it whatsoever. I mean, it takes ages to actually reach a speed. So let me just set it to say 50% speed and give it power. It's like a slow startup. With most locos, you can set it to a speed and it will jump straight to that speed. This one seems to struggle and Here's another thing, watch this, if I just put my finger in front of it and wind it up to 50 per oops, it needs to set the right direction first, <laughs> helps, set it up to 50% speed, there's no torque there, no torque there whatsoever, look at that. And if I try that with the old Hornby Prairie, let me go and bring that one in. Okay, here's the old model, let me try the same thing, this is going to be awkward, I'll just hold it here, same thing, set it to 50% speed, 
it's got power to spare. Now, yes, this is geared to run faster, but actually, mechanically speaking, that should give it less torque, not more. Yeah, there's something not quite right about this new model. I don't want to say that there's something wrong with the motor, but yeah, the way it runs is very typical of other Locos that I have that do have issues with the motors. Right, well, let's see what the crawl is like now that it's fully running. Let's try this. I'm just getting off the express point. The express point's there, by the way. That's where the dead zone is. Right, let's turn it up slowly. So as you can see, the slow crawl is really good. That's really controlled, isn't it? I don't know how consistent it would be. Let's turn it up a little bit. Yeah, the slow speed is fantastic. Strangely, and this is very rare, but it seems to be the higher speeds where there are issues. I've not yet tried it with coaches, but it will be interesting to see how it handles those. Okay, we're now on the dead zone of the express points, so this should give us an idea of how reliable the pickups are. The answer seems to be very. I mean, no cutouts yet. The center wheels, center driving wheels are just over the dead zone now, and they've cleared it. Ooh, ooh, I thought we'd cut out then, not quite. There we go, so the crawl looks to be really good. It's just something about the power and the, the actual performance of it, I can't put my finger on. Please, if you've got one of these, let me know. Have you noticed the same thing? Does it seem to vary in speed as it goes along? Labored is the word I would use. It's just something not quite right. Maybe I've just got a faulty example, I'm not too sure, but something isn't quite right. Anyway, I've measured the tractive effort. I make it 0.26 newtons, and that's not because of wheel slip, that's because of the, the motor slowing right down and the wheel set basically coming to a stop. That should be enough for it to haul around 18 coaches on straight and level track, although obviously doing anything that makes the motor slow down that much is not advisable, and so I wouldn't recommend loading it up with anything like that number of coaches. Anyway, I've got six coaches set up, so I think that's quite reasonable, isn't it? Almost quite prototypical, I imagine. So let's go and couple to those, see if that coupling works. I have now glued it in place. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, okay, steady on. Yeah, the crawl's quite good, isn't it? But quite inconsistent. Did you see that speed up there? I did not actually turn up the knob at all there. It was constant. There we are. I'm not touching the controller now. And that's pretty good, actually. Say it's got coaches. That's not bad at all. Look at that. I think it needs a bit more. Let's tweak it up a bit. There we are. Look at that. Speeding up. It's speeding up as it's going. That shows that there's... Oh, and it stopped on the express points. Oh, well, so much for that experiment then. Yeah, it just shows that there is a lack of power there somehow. Look, it's still speeding up now. Oh struggles on those points for some reason. Yeah, I don't know, maybe I'm just overreacting, but when I see a loco behaving strangely, it makes me fear for the motor. Uh, anyway, so here comes the old Hornby Large Prairie, which also struggles on points a little bit. I mean, this one seems much more powerful, and the fact that it's 100 grams heavier. Oop, hey up. The new one's stopped already. Slowed right down on one of the curves. Yeah, there's something wrong, something wrong. Uh, yeah, this is 100 grams heavier, and yet it's got so much more torque. Uh, so, off it goes. This has only got five coaches, though, so I might have to up it to six and just prove that it is actually more powerful than the old one, than the new one, rather. And then on the inside line, we have the Small Prairie. Uh, it's coming now. Blackman Small Prairie going backwards this time with some box fans. There you go, look at that. Okay, so let's catch up with the new Large Prairie and see if it's struggling. I think it is. Right, let's approach this curve again. Now, this is 40% speed on the controller, and the fact that it is this slow at that speed suggests that the gearing is arranged for torque as opposed to speed, and yet, look at that. It's normally only Backman Locos that do that. There we are. Look at the speed of the old... That, that's 30% speed there. So that's actually set slower than the new version. Look at that, there's no power at all. It's all but stopped. Oh, and there it goes. Oh, speeding up, slowing down. That's not right. That can't be right. Brand new model should not be performing like that. Look at the state of it. So I'm not in a position to answer this question, but I have to wonder, are they just not powerful? Or is mine faulty? 
I would say it can't be faulty because if you turn it up it can do it and after this lap I'll turn it up to 50% and see if that's enough but if it can do it at 50% and yet it's doing this at 40 that just suggests a real lack of power to me look at the state of that right well this is not going to be doing it any good is it let me give it a push look at that sorry about the poor camera work there yeah that is really poor go it's still not as fast as it was so six coaches and it's completely knocked for six something ain't right there let's knock it up to 50 percent then see if that makes a difference okay 50 percent this is an increase in just 10 percent on the controller and it's all better You see, and that's what's confusing me, because if it was struggling constantly, I mean, it has slowed down a lot. If, but if the motor was faulty, I wouldn't expect it to be so much better by just turning the controller off a bit. That's normally not the case. So the controller is set back to 40 again. I'm just going to flick it off without touching the speed dial. Right, I'm going to take off the Prairie, which hmm, feels a bit warm. It's noticeably warm through the body, which is a bit of a worry. Come on then, Smokey Joe, 40 pound loco. Carry on where it left off. See if this can do it. Wow. New Prairie kind of sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it cannot be right. Cannot be right. When a 40 pound Smoky Joe outperforms it, you know something ain't right. Wow. All right, so are they all like this or is mine just faulty? I really don't know, but I would like to find out. So please, if you have one of these new ones, uh, not one of the old ones, it has to have been one from the last couple of months, let me know. Can you recreate any of these scenarios at home? I'm using a non-feedback DC controller, if that helps. Might try it on the HM2000 at some point, see how it handles feedback. I might be inclined to say that it's faulty, so I might be lenient in the ratings, just in case. Um, but depending on what you guys say, I might revisit this. Hmm. So here are some of my ratings then for the brand new Hornby Large Prairie. The level of detail I've given just four star. Generally, I was really impressed by the level of detail, but there were just one or two things that let it down for me. Most noticeably, the use of plastic on the copper chimney. Now, that is a real downgrade because even the old Hornby Large Prairie had a proper copper chimney top and it looked so much better. The same thing goes with the whistles. Plastic doesn't look as good as metal and on a brand new tooled model, you want to be upgrading, not downgrading. On the plus side, you've got great decoration, the sprung buffers, the finish, all looks fantastic. The cab detail, I think we've seen better, and there are a few parts that were just moulded on as opposed to separately fitted, which might have been nice to see separately fitted. But overall, the level of detail is okay, but not in every area is it an improvement over the old model. The performance then generally is okay, I mean the crawl is a lot better now that it's running, but the way the loco runs is quite laboured, it seems to fluctuate in terms of speed which isn't very good, there's no torque there whatsoever, I mean like I say you put your finger behind the loco, stop it running, the wheel set just almost comes to a stop, it's really not very powerful. Which leads us on to the actual power of the Loco, 18 coaches, uh, 0.26 newtons is what I measured, that's actually less than the Adams radial tank, which has one pair less of driving wheels, so that's not great either, I mean, it's okay, it's okay, it's more than adequate for its purpose, but not as powerful as it might have been. The mechanism though, I mean, I think I'm giving it the slight benefit of the doubt here if there is an issue with the motor, but generally speaking, the mechanism's really, really good. You've got the proper turn metal bearings, nice big flywheel, five pole motor, plenty of pickups, the mechanism itself is really, really good, so I've given that five star. Quality then, I've given right in the middle 2.5. Now, the build quality, fantastic. The mechanism, really, really good. However, there are a few issues which are not acceptable given the price of the model. And as I say, I'm wondering how some of these actually got through their testing phase because they're quite obvious flaws. So you've got the coupling, won't stay in. I've now had to glue it in, thus kind of spoiling the model. But that coupling dropping out, and as we saw, completely stopping the loco dead 
damaging it for all I know is no good at all. That front truck also no good. Needing to loosen screws on moving parts before they work properly seems to be a bit of a schoolboy error. It's a bit incompetent, isn't it? And also the lack of die cast is a real shame on an otherwise pretty good quality model. Value for money then, once again, I've chosen 2.5 star, kind of middle of the road. I mean, the level of detail is really, really good. The finish of the model is fantastic. The actual way it's been put together is wonderful. But for $139.99 or even $126 as I paid from Hattons, you'd want a bit of die cast. You'd want some of those metal details. You want the top notch performance. Unfortunately, that high price set expectations which were not met. Quite disappointing that, but overall, I mean, it's not terrible. If you really want a large prairie, it is better than the old one. Not in every area, as I would have liked, but overall, it's okay. Overall then, that is a fairly mediocre score of 6.57 out of 10. The downsides of this model are pretty obvious though, aren't they? As subjective as my opinions are. Yeah, I think that is pretty fair. Into the logbook we go then, 36th, just above the Mahano TGV and below the Backman Russian Decapod. Not a bad model by any means, and I certainly would recommend it, but it's not as good as it could have been perhaps. Yeah, that's a great shame because it could have been a beautiful model, but I do get the impression that they didn't pull out all the stops, the lack of die cast, all that plastic, and the poor performance doesn't paint a very positive picture, does it, unfortunately? And the funny thing is, a lot of my locos that have got motor issues, most of them seem to have those weird open frame motors. The failures in the can motors, don't get me wrong, five pole ones too, seem to be much fewer and far between. But that's the thing, I'm not saying this is a failed motor. It doesn't seem like it is. But perhaps it's not in the state it ought to be in, perhaps. I'm not sure. Very, very odd. And of course, I do feel bad if mine is just a faulty example and the rest are fine. But at the end of the day, it's incumbent on Hornby to make sure that every model leaving their factories is perfect. And if one of them isn't and it ends up on a review, then that is representative of their output, really, isn't it? So, yeah, I will update. I will update. If I hear anything from Hornby, if I hear anything from you guys, if it makes for interesting learnings, I'll let you know. Besides the performance issues though, yeah, the model's all right. It's not great, but it's all right besides the performance issues. So, very interesting. Learned a lot. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? What's your gut instinct? Why would you think it would behave like this? I'm very interested now. Thanks for your time though. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review and I will see you on the next one. Cheers everybody.